So I'm here in the real-time playground, which can be found at platform.openai.com. You create an account or you log in and then you can click on the playground and then real time on the left side. And this allows you to play around with the parameters, things like the system prompt and some of the settings for the real-time API and test it out in your browser without having to write any code. So it's really useful for getting a feel for how this thing might work before you get deep into your coding project. And a couple areas that I want to pay attention to, the first is the system instructions. So normally when you create a prompt for an AI assistant, you give it some information about how it's supposed to behave and act. So this is the default set of system instructions here. Um, you're a helpful, witty, and friendly AI, act like a human, but remember that you aren't a human and that you can't do things in the real world, et cetera. Uh, we also have the ability to adjust the voice, the voice activity detection, where it can detect the turns that I am taking versus the API speaking back to me. And then I'll get into some of the other parameters later. So I'm going to go with just this default set of system instructions to show you what the real time API looks like and how it works. So I'll click here in start session. Hey there, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm trying to record this video right now and there are actually jackhammers outside. So I'm worried that the sound is going to pick up, uh, but uh, we'll hope for the best. Oh man, that's always tricky. Those background noises have a knack for showing up at the worst times, huh? Hopefully your microphone has good noise cancellation. Fingers yeah, crossed I'm trying for... to make a video about voice assistance. Basically, I want to build a better version of Alexa. Do you have any tips for me? That sounds like an exciting project. Here are a few tips for building a better voice assistant. One, natural language understanding. Prioritize understanding the user's intent, not just their words. Okay, so I think you can see within this demo some of the key things about the real-time API. The first is that it responds very quickly. It's almost like I'm having a conversation with a real person. And you might've noticed that I actually interrupted it and cut it off before it finished speaking. It stopped speaking and listened to my new prompt. And you also might notice that it acts a lot like ChatGPT, where it's spitting out answers, uh, lists of an answer, but it's doing it over voice instead of text. Okay, so that was a pretty good first pass. And what I want to do now is show you some of the parameters that I just changed. So I changed my system prompts here to you're a smart speaker like the Echo or Google Home. You can answer questions about the weather, uh, make up information if you don't know. And I also asked it to make its responses funny. And I also shifted one of the parameters down here called temperature. Temperature in LLMs basically allows you to adjust the trade-off between accuracy and creativeness in your answers. So a lower temperature, something closer to 0.0, .0 would give you a more accurate, less creative answer and theoretically a more consistent answer every time. Whereas a higher temperature, uh, maybe around one, as I, I have here, would give you something a little bit more creative, maybe a little bit funnier even since I told it to be funny. I did also change the voice to echo you can see that there are a number of uh, voices here within the real-time API. So I'm gonna give this all a shot now and see how it pans out. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? Hope your day yeah, is Yeah, I'm trying to film a, a video right now, but I've literally got jackhammers and sirens in the background. I hope the best for those people and I understand the problems, but you know, I wish that it was a little bit quieter to film this video. Ah, the classic soundtrack of urban life, right? Jackhammers and sirens make for a great industrial theme, but they're not the best for your video's audio quality. Maybe you can tell everyone you're going for an avant-garde vibe. Yeah, or perhaps that's true. That's true. I'm actually wondering, do you know what the weather in San Francisco is going to be later today? Oh, San Francisco, the city of unpredictable weather. Later today, you can expect it to be mostly mild with a high chance of some fog rolling in. 
because it's San Francisco and the fog likes to make a daily appearance like a dramatic actor on stage. Don't forget your light jacket. It's practically a part of the San Fran dress code. Yeah, that's true. Whenever I go out and I don't wear layers, I instantly regret it. Yep. In San Francisco, layers are basically your best friend. Going out without layers is like challenging the city's microclimates to a duel. One moment you're basking in the sun, the next, the fog swoops in, and bam, you're shivering like you've just seen the bill after a fancy dinner. Stay cozy out there. So that's pretty cool. We got to try out the different voice. It got to be a little bit more clever in its responses with the higher temperature and the new prompt. What I wanted to do now is show you how function calling works. So I'm going to go to this section functions and click add, and I'll use this really handy generate feature to generate two functions. So the first one I want to generate is getting the current weather. So OpenAI will go generate this function, which it has decided to call get current weather. And it takes in a couple of parameters. The first is the location. I think that's very important. The second is the unit. So Celsius or Fahrenheit or metric or imperial in this case. And then the third is the language of the response. So I'm also going to click this checkbox for respond with automatically generated output. In your actual production use case, when the API makes a function call, you have to write the script and on your own server or device, actually go out, make the request to get that information and provide it back to the API. But for continuity sake, so you can see how this would work in practice, I'm going to have OpenAI automatically generate a response here so that you can feel what it's like. So we have one new tool call available here, get current weather, and I'm going to add one more, get the weather forecast for a particular location. So we got this new function, get weather forecast, and it has a few properties. So the first is location and the second is going to be date. The third is units, metric or imperial. And the fourth is a forecast type. When you create your own functions, you can certainly customize these, uh, write them from scratch even. They don't necessarily have to have this many parameters, but we'll just go with what OpenAI suggests here for ease. So I'm gonna save that. And now we have two tools available to be called. I also edited the prompt here and I removed the bit about making up the weather response. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my session and show how the tool calls would work in practice. Hey, what's the weather right now in San Francisco? It's currently 68 degrees Fahrenheit and partly cloudy in San Francisco. The humidity is at 72%. So your hair might be doing its own interpretive dance gotcha. right now. Gotcha. Do you think it's better for me to be bring a sweater or a jacket with me? Even that it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit and partly cloudy, I'd say a sweater should do the trick. But if you tend to be on the chilly side or plan on staying out after the sun sets, a jacket might be a safer bet. Hey, Plus, so I'm also going to New York City this weekend. Can you tell me what the weather there is going to be like on Sunday? I'm wondering if I need to bring a heavy jacket or not. On Sunday in New York City, you can expect a high of 55 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 41 degrees Fahrenheit with partly cloudy skies. There's a small 10% chance of precipitation. that's gonna be pretty cold. I definitely wanna bring a jacket and a sweater in that case. Great idea. You can layer up with the sweater and then add the Okay, so we can see the function calls were generated. The first one was getting the current weather and it generated a response. Uh, but this is where we would actually write code to go request from a, an API like the weather.com API and then provide that information back to the model. And you can also see we had our tool call get weather forecast. It called the weather forecast for a particular date in the future. And it responded with some information about what the weather is going to be like. 
And then the model interpreted that information with information about whether I should bring a heavy jacket or a sweater. So function calling is quite a useful feature. And I'd say it's actually totally necessary for the purpose of building a smart speaker, because otherwise it's just going to be something that you can talk to and it's not going to be very useful. So getting the current weather and getting the forecast are examples of two tools that we could break in to start to bring this device up to parity with something like the Echo. And here are some other tool ideas that we might build to make this project more usable. We might be able to make a tool call to an internal clock and timer so that we can set timers and set alarms. We might be able to trigger an external system like Home Assistant to adjust our lighting. We might be able to work with a music streaming service like Spotify to start playing music. We might use a simple rag approach to maintain a grocery list or a to-do list. These are all examples of possibilities that we'll explore in future videos 